as you talk about eggs, it gets me thinking about one of the vegan documentaries. I think it might've been Game Changers comparing having an egg to having five cigarettes or something like that. So again, you have to look at- That was done by Arnold Schwarzenegger who bragged about having 20 to 30 eggs a day when he was doing body lifting. So I think Game Changer has been sufficiently debunked. In fact, Cameron, who was actually the director uh, owns the is an investor in the only pea processing plant in the United States. So you know one has to take it. Uh, it really wasn't a documentary; it was actually a sales pitch. We'll talk more about that. You've alluded to the bad science piece, but the fact that even when science appears to be good, depending on how the study's done, who's funding it, we got to look back and make sure that there's not ulterior motives there. You know, funny pieces are odd because you have to realize in nutrition that our health organization, the National Institute of Health, requires that interested parties fund the research. So when I was studying the leucine effect um, and breakthrough discovery that changed how we think about protein. I sent that proposal to NIH for 10 years and they rejected it because they said, we really don't have any diseases related to protein, so it's not worth studying. I finally had to go to Kraft Foods and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and the Dairy Council to get funding for that, which we now know leucine is the key to all of protein synthesis in muscle. So you have to look at it in terms of, of the test of time. I never believe any publication I see till it appears in two more labs, two more independent labs. When it starts showing up in, I don't care who funded it, the first one. I don't believe it. I don't care. I mean, one of the things I always tell students is if you go into nutrition, you have to realize you are biased. Everybody eats and nobody starts out their day saying, I'm going to have a really ugly diet, you know? And so by definition, everybody's biased. And so you have to accept that. And then you have to look for good science. And good science is done by repetition. Cholesterol was argued to be a cause of heart disease for 35 to 40 years. Bad science. It was repeated over and over. And the longer it went, the weaker the, the argument got. Till we finally got rid of the requirement in 2010. Nutrition is a test of time, a test of good laboratories produ producing good data. So again, if I see a headline in the newspaper, I basically laugh and shrug it off. Basically, I go to the study, see who did it, and see if I can find two more labs that have done the same thing. If I know, I totally discount it until I see it. So bias is something that people like to use to say, well, that was funded by the Dairy Council or the Egg Board, so we can't believe it. Well, we still have a cholesterol requirement in our diet if the egg board hadn't funded the cholesterol research to prove that it was nonsense. This right here is my favorite protein powder, the 100% grass-fed bone broth protein from Paleo Valley. It comes in three flavors, unflavored chocolate and vanilla. The chocolate and vanilla you can just mix with water, they taste incredible just like that. And I like to take the unflavored, scoop it in my black coffee, mix it in, I barely taste it, but I'm getting that collagen and protein boost. These protein powders have been third-party tested for over 40 different herbicides and pesticides. They've come back negative. There's no chemicals or solvents used in the processing, just water. As a viewer of the show, click the link in the description to save 15% off this protein today. Again, this is my favorite protein. I know you're going to love it. The challenge with a lot of this too is the fact that people are all so busy and a lot of times out of convenience and because there's some entertainment value there too, we end up getting our nutrition info and, and dietary guidelines through documentaries like Game Changers. And when people do decide to get into the weeds and maybe get on YouTube and, and start finding some PhDs like yourself, there's so many conflicting pieces so there's a lot there people have to sift through is what I'm getting at. Sure. It's very complex and, and, and I feel for the end user to try and sort through it. I like to try and make it as non-complex as possible. Uh, basically, we all have an absolute requirement for protein. 
We know it's a range. We know you can go from a minimum 0.8 grams up to probably 2.5. Pick it. Pick what you want. Once you make a pick, now you've defined a whole lot of other things about your life. How much resistance exercise are you going to do? How, you know, what are you going to do? Then everything else has to fall in place. How much energy do you need? Do you want that to be carbs or do you want it to be fat? Okay. There's nothing inherently wrong with carbs or fat. It's amounts. You know, what's the ratio? So, and you know, when we talk about plants, plants are a very important part of nutrients and fiber, but they're a pretty poor source of protein. So if you're thinking about them as a protein source, you really have to be careful. You're talking about either, you know, ultra processed, you refined products, or you're talking about having, um, you know, six servings of of lentils, six servings of beans, six servings of soy products per day, probably at least two of those three categories to even get close to your requirement. So, you know, I think that, you know, the old school of, you know, eat a varied diet is still with us. Uh, animal proteins are an important part of the diet from a nutrient density. If you make choices, personal choices, not to have animal proteins, then you have to be much more sophisticated about your diet. You need to know a lot more about nutrients and a lot more about amino acids. And the average adult in the United States just simply doesn't have the knowledge or the food skills to do it. Fortunately, you know, most people are eating, you know, diets with 80 grams of protein per day and 65% of it's coming from animal proteins. And that's a mixture that's pretty healthy. We get along pretty well. We're eating way too many calories, so there's obesity. But that's not a protein issue, that's a carbohydrate issue. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. It's all about balance and ratios. And so again, you can do it. And there's vegetarians and vegans out there who are very skilled at it. But the average consumer has no clue.